There was just nothing to explain it, nothing. It was just very, very scary. You are about to see real people. This is not normal. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. This place was really, really haunted, and I don't think I've ever seen my dad so scared. When evil spirits target children. It was definitely the scariest night of my life. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. I was 13. I was having some troubles in school, uh, some family issues. And uh, my parents decided that I should probably move to another place to maybe get a fresh start. And uh, that way I could work harder at school and pay more attention to things that were important to my future. Mark moved in with his aunt and her baby daughter, Megan. It was a move that would change his life forever. It's encompassed my whole life for a very long time, almost 23 years, in some way, shape, or form. And it's shown me that there are things out there that me or you or anybody um, cannot account for. These things are real. From the very beginning of his stay, Mark got a bad feeling about the house. It was a ranch-style home. Um, it was dated back to the late 1800s. It used to have a basement. One of the um, walls had actually been boarded up to what I believe was a root cellar. So, just my first impression moving into the home was that this is very old and this place is kind of weird the way it's situated on the street. 200 feet from the house next to it, which was a very large old home, uh, Victorian style. Mark's uneasiness increased further when strange things started to happen. It almost felt like the house had a mind of its own. And I had noticed a few things, like uh, that toilet would flush in the middle of the night. would be up. Lights would come on by themselves sometimes. Heavy wooden doors would open and close on their own. Um, at night, a few times, I'd heard my door rattle, uh, my doorknob rattle. personality. Young children, uh, adolescents, are very vulnerable to spirits because they're closer to the spirit world. They're not taught yet to dissociate and discern everything that comes to them. They take everything as it is and they see that. And because of that innocence, it's a lot easier for them to connect with that. Kids have a lot of energy in general, but as some of the kids that have so much energy, they don't know what to do with it. That energy sometimes spews out and can create what we call the poltergeist anomaly. Mark was soon going to learn all about the destructive power of poltergeist energy. It was a Saturday evening. He's going out for a little bit. Which was not unusual. Well, you be good tonight, okay? And uh, I was left to babysit uh, Meg. And 
Um, again, not an unusual thing. Was completely comfortable with it. I've been in the house alone plenty of times, at night and and, and during the day, and um, never felt like. Well, I never felt like I did that evening, uh, being watched like someone else was in the house. <laughs> Meg was uh, about 18 months, so just under two years. Um, she really hadn't gotten her legs underneath her yet. But this evening, I had heard a knock on our back door. In sports, the international basketball game. Seven games on the schedule. Hey. I just happened to uh, know this particular officer that was working that night, a friend of the family. And he said that they had gotten a report or a phone call through dispatch that we were having a party. Um, in the house. Now, again, I'm the only one there um, with Meg, who was sound asleep in her crib. And he came in, he took a look around. Because I knew that the officer, he said, yeah, it came from next door. The Victorian next to us. And I had never seen anyone come in or out of that house. We just always assumed that it was purchased, bought, and abandoned. I remember coming home every day from school and there were newspapers on the front porch that were always being delivered and the mailbox was overflowing with mail. And there's no way there could have been a phone call come from inside that house. There's just no way. And he said, well, I, I don't have any explanation for it. You know, just don't have anybody over here. You know, you're too young to be home alone with people in the house besides you and Meg. After the officer left, Meg started to cry. <laughs> so obviously I went inside the room. I figured she had just dropped her bottle. <laughs> I looked everywhere for this thing. into the kitchen and made her a bottle. And when I came back in the room, there was the bottle that I had been looking for sitting right in front of her crib on the floor where I would have been standing. So that kind of rattled me a little bit because now I thought there's someone in this house. So now I was a, I was a bit scared, so um, I gave her the bottle. Fearing he was not home alone, Mark decided to grab some protection. behind the uh, couch where we kept a bat. It was kind of our last defense, our home security, so to speak. And I walked from one corner of the house to the, to the other.
13-year-old Mark Foster was home alone babysitting his infant cousin when he started to experience strange goings-on in his house. So when the knock came to the door, I hit the ceiling. They had received another report that we had a party going on in my house. Checked everything out again, made sure that I wasn't lying. And that's when I told him everything that was going on in the house. You're the only one in here. Honestly, he looked at me like, I know he's not lying to me. And um, he put his arm around my shoulder and he said, you know what, you just hold tight. He decided to go and find my aunt um, to let her know that she needed to come home. As soon as Mark was alone, the strange activity plaguing his cousin started again. But now, it was getting stronger. When I peeked in on her, she wasn't crying, um, but she was standing straight up in her bed. Like someone was holding her. <clears throat> up underneath the arms, um, because at that point, she couldn't stand with holding on to something. And then I thought I heard something behind me, and I turned to look. And maybe a second later, turned back around, and she was sound asleep, back laying down in her bed. Then the strange activity began to increase. The tea kettle went off, full blast. When I walked into the kitchen, every single electric burner on our stove was on. The cabinets were open. The teacups that she never used, fine china on their plates as if someone was coming for tea. Quite frankly, I almost my pants because I knew I needed to go into that room. I didn't have a choice. I had to turn the burners off. <laughs> Sorry to be so blunt, but I almost defecated on myself. That's how crazy it was. I made my way in there and uh, threw the tea kettle into the sink. Instinctively, Mark rushed back to protect his cousin, but whatever was in Mark's house had other ideas. Went to step through the doorway and I was physically picked up and thrown backwards through the door. sitting, 13-year-old Mark Foster was being tormented by paranormal activity. But then it escalated into a violent physical attack. And I was physically picked up and thrown backwards through the door. And uh, I still have the scar to prove it. Um, eight, eight to 12 stitches I had to have. 
spirits and ghosts are two different things, right? Spirits are someone that cross over, come back. Ghosts are someone that are here, stuck. Poltergeist anomaly are built of energy, built of energy of fear, fear-based. And now that fear base, it grows from that. It grows from energy from children. And from that, it can be actually manipulated into actually be a physical form and actually act out to harm somebody. It's the fear that really creates the, the anomaly, that poltergeist that's there. Stunned and bleeding, Mark was afraid that his cousin had been attacked too. I knew I was dealing with something evil. The only way to describe it. I was damn well determined to get in that room. That was my only thought. I need to get in and protect the baby. That's it. Nothing was going to keep me out of that room. I just put my shoulder down and I ran as hard as I could. I grabbed her out of her crib, um, walked back through the doorway into the living room, and um, sat down on the couch and just waited. And um, I was still bleeding. My aunt came home and saw the condition I was in and, you know, instantly panicked and was like, what is going on? I told her everything that happened. Definitely, I could tell she was 100% believe in me. Well, it's sort of like whatever it was that I told you, I got you. That's the way I felt afterwards. I got you. Now you know. Now you know that I'm here. And we got you. A spirit or a ghost may want to try to kill someone just because they still either hold a grudge towards that person that they knew in life, or because they're just a very violent, negative, possibly even demonic type spirit. Still terrified by his experience that night, Mark moved out of his aunt's house shortly after. I became very introverted after I came back to Chicago. Um, mostly because I had lost a connection um, with not just my family, but I think a little bit of myself. Um, I was still kind of dealing with the results of my attack. Um, so I didn't really talk to anybody. The reason through my experience why people are so hesitant to talk about paranormal experiences or encounters is fear. That's it, fear. Their fear of being ridiculed by people, or fear of somebody not believing them, or fear of not knowing what to do. We're losing our connection. We're trying to communicate with who's really there, and we're getting caught up in all this fear base and losing the sense of communicating and understanding what we're all about here in the physical and the spirit. Years later, Mark would get a clue about the reason behind the attacks. I'm 100% convinced that my encounter was a direct result of what they found in, on that property. They um, dug up the foundation of the old house. They uncovered a tunnel that led from the Victorian next door to the house that we lived in. And when they knocked down some of the brick, they found the human skeletal remains of what appeared to be a family.
But I believe personally that it, it was um, the angry spirit of, if not that whole family, at least the father figure that they uncovered that was trying to tell me, this is my house. This is my family. I don't want you here. You're gonna get out one way or the other. I wouldn't want anything that ever happened to me to happen to anyone, even my worst enemy. Not in a million years. It was definitely the scariest night of my life. Being tormented by spirits for one night is bad enough, but for some children, the terror goes on and on. Michaela. Don McDonald and his children, Michaela and Cameron, moved into a farmhouse with a disturbing past. But the cheap rent proved too good a deal to turn down. We knew the stories of the farm, that a young girl about 17 had been murdered there and left in the barn to rot for two years before her body was found. What started the search was after um, the owner of the time had gotten in a fight with his roommate or a tenant, and, um, well, the one guy ended up dying, and then the police were called. I think there was more to the murders than what they said. There's the possibility of bodies still existing on the property what we were told. When 16-year-old Michaela arrived, she felt a darkness coming from the barn. The landlord had told us that the previous owners had moved out really quick, didn't even give um, a notification that they were leaving, and left everything there. Left real quick without him even knowing, so he wasn't sure what happened. Everything in the house was left um, from the food on the tables to um, all the furniture, clothes, and such. Creepy. Very creepy. Kind of like a chill going up your spine kind of thing. Like you're being watched. Daughter Michaela didn't like it. She didn't like the feeling of the place. It was just, she knew we couldn't really afford too much, so. Children can tend to attract paranormal activity because, because they are more open to spirit and it's easy for spirit to interact with them. A spirit may sometimes target a child uh, because that child is much more easier to terrorize or scare out of a display of power, and that child is unable to defend themselves.
the family settled into their new home as best they could. The oppressive atmosphere bothered them, but nothing untoward happened at first. I believe it was a few months after we were there, you'd hear these really loud um, bangs. Police have a suspect in custody, but... Shortly after 16-year-old Michaela McDonald Smith and her family moved into a farmhouse with a murderous past, she started hearing strange noises in the night. I believe it was a few months after we were there, you'd hear these really loud um, bangs. Police have a suspect in custody, but... There was times where you could just tell it was footsteps running on the stairs back and forth. Yeah, footsteps, like the sound of someone with work boots on walking up the stairs and to the hallway. And we would run up there, you know, like, is there an intruder or is my little brother out of bed, perhaps? But it was, there was never anyone there. Some of the early signs of a haunting can be things like lights flickering, uh, doors opening or closing. Um, Different things like that could happen because that's what a spirit has the energy to be able to do. There was the point where there was doors and windows shutting by themselves. We always had problems with the lights, always turning on and off. Turned on the light and the light just turned off on you. And it's like, okay. At a location where there's been a violent death, particularly a murder, there is a much greater chance that a haunting will result because when a spirit passes in that traumatic way, there's usually a lot of anger there and that pent up anger will result in them being locked to that location. Sometimes, because I work late at night, the doors would start slamming and you didn't know which doors were there because either the doors were closed or it was the sound of a, like a wood stove door closing really hard. Pretty weird. was in bed and I had just gone to bed. It was about 1.30 in the morning. 
And I just had that feeling to look over in the corner of my room. stood this man and he had like a he was black of the night he had a top hat on and it seemed to be like a trench coat type so back like in the olden days they used to wear their long coats and to this day we call him the man in black It stood there for a few minutes, and I was too scared to move. And then it just took off uh, outside of my door. Really scared me and had me starting to believe that this place was really, really haunted. Hauntings can start out with something as innocent as footsteps, and they can progress very rapidly into much more threatening activity. Perhaps it's because the spirit is feeling you out. What level of fear are you going to have? What reaction are you going to have? And the more they can intimidate you, the more they will escalate their activity. Michaela was frightened by the activity in the house but it was the nearby barn where a young woman's murdered body had once been found that really filled her with dread. From the barn, you would feel a lot of staring. Um, it would make you feel uncomfortable. You were always constantly being watched. Whenever you were near windows, especially in the kitchen, which was a great view to the barn. You would see fragments of shadows. Since moving into their new farmhouse, Michaela McDonald Smith and her family had been experiencing paranormal activity. Then one night while standing in her kitchen, Michaela had the strange feeling she was being watched from the barn. see like this, uh, it seemed to be like a shadow man and he would walk across one of the beams in the barn and he just walked back repeatedly. The one that was in the barn was always negative. He, he seemed always angry.
Help would come from an unlikely source. When he was threatening her, the spirit she called the man in black would show up and step in front of her and kind of protect her from him. Yeah, he scared me, but at the same time, I felt safe um, from the other spirits from him. So it was almost like the property had its own, like, black angel. But the man in black couldn't protect Michaela and Don from what was yet to come. When I turned 17, my dad had thrown a birthday party for me, and I had brought a bunch of my friends from my new school. We had the fire, roasted some marshmallows, and we're all hanging outside, and um, everyone had started to have a bad headache. My dad started to get a really bad, violent look in his eye. Um, his head was just driving him nuts. And then I, all you heard was the screaming outside, and we thought someone was in the forest. No one knew what to do. We didn't know if it was a real person. So my dad went out to the forest, and uh, this was the first time anyone's gone to the forest at night. close to the forest and we never went in it but we were walking by it but we got this strange feeling like like we've never felt before and it was like we shouldn't be there and we just had to stop and we just looked at each other like, OK, do you feel that? All of a sudden, we see this massive figure come, like, sticking out of the forest. At her 17th birthday party, Michaela McDonald Smith and her friends were startled when they heard strange sounds coming from a nearby forest. Her father, Don, left the group to investigate the source of the screaming. All of a sudden, we see this massive figure come, like, sticking out of the forest, and it just scared, the, scared us completely. And, we're just like, yeah, okay, we're done, we're running. I remember just seeing their flashlights and they came running back. Like, I mean, they came running back. And I don't think I've ever seen my dad so scared. If you're witnessing a very large dark cloud, chances are that is multiple entities and probably multiple negative entities gathering together. That, yeah, that thing in the forest was probably the number one most scariest thing I've ever had to deal with so far. I would say this thing was like, it was taller than us, it was bigger, it was, 
I couldn't even describe what the, like, kind of a shape it was. The advice I would give somebody who's experiencing violent activity from a spirit would be to contact a local paranormal team to try to get assistance. Shaken by his experience, Don called in a team of paranormal investigators. The psychic and the lead investigator, Michaela, went to the barn. First time we went in, we were getting spikes on our K2 meters. And at one point, um, a team member, Brad, a medium psychic, he picked up on a male spirit who I believe he said was the male who was murdered at the farm. And then as we were moving around, he picked up on another spirit, female spirit. Uh, the first recording that we caught was a male voice. It sounded agitated. The first time we heard it, it was basically just a high. Like, what well, did you all hear that? We're all like, we all heard that. Hi. When we all walked in there, no one wanted to be in there. It was hard to breathe. My teeth were like clenched automatically, they hurt. I was shaking, uh, not from fear, but more from anger. And Michaela, she couldn't, she couldn't breathe, like she was shaking. And I guess her gums started to bleed. I had to walk out of the barn. And Brad decided that this oppressive feeling was getting to be too much, and he started asking more direct questions to if there was anything there. And he was trying to basically get a response back. And at one point, he started choking. He felt he was being choked out. And actually had to leave that location because um, he was basically getting in distress. And when I was in the barn by myself, I had what sounded like footsteps circling me in the stone. It's a stone floor. So there was something of a heavy weight walking around my, walking around me and making the noise. I had stones thrown at me from inside. A lot, a lot of just negative feelings from the place. I just pretty much didn't like the feeling in there and left. If a spirit doesn't like you or it is particularly negative, in rare cases, it can throw objects at you. And obviously, that is an expression of its anger and its intent to hurt you. And that takes an awful lot of energy, usually a lot of negative energy, to propel something through the air like that. I have a photo of Brad walking toward me, and there is a, what looks like a black mass in the corner. It's blocking any light behind it, it's actually, looks like a human-sized shadow. When we brought the evidence back, I think for them, it was more of a reassurance. They felt justified, vindicated, like, yes, you guys got something, so it's, it's real.
When things were starting to get more spookier, I didn't know if, you know, was this safe for us to be here? Were we causing something more than what we should be just by being here and living here? Was it safe for my brother or my dad or me or anyone else that came to the house? So in 2014, we decided to move. I think there was a lot that happened in that barn um, that a lot of people will not know or will ever know.